Welcome to this edition of Diligence Inside America's Boardrooms. I'm TK Kerstetter, and I'll be your host for today's show. Today we're going to be talking about lessons learned serving on a troubled company board. And joining me is someone who's going to share their experiences. Please welcome Laura Lee, who's a former board, board member with American Apparel, and she's also a member of the Next Gen Board Leaders Group. So welcome, Laura. Thank you, TK. I'm thrilled to be on. So again, you were on the board of American Apparel. Mm -hmm. They ultimately ran into some financial problems, which right. were well documented in the press. I know you can't give the details of that because it wasn't that long ago and there's still some legal sensitivity. But can you uh, provide our audience with um, your why and when you joined the board um, and at what point you know, sure. did sort of uh, you realize that you had a challenge ahead of you. Yeah. Well, I was thrilled to be asked to join the board because American Apparel, to me, was such an iconic brand that, as you alluded to, had run into some troubled times, but my inner teeny, teeny boppy still secretly shopped there, so I felt like there was some kismet there. But on a more serious note, to me, it was a huge opportunity to be able to take what were my lanes originally, so digital and marketing expertise, and bring that to bear at the company. And what was super exciting to me was we knew that there was some trouble. We didn't know how troubled they were until we actually got in the door. But it was an opportunity to have a clean sweep. So there were four other directors that joined with me in the summer of 2014 when a new investor base came on. And we viewed it as an opportunity to transform a brand that was struggling, but that we thought we could turn around. And from a personal note, it was a tremendous opportunity for me to be able to join my first public board and to contribute. So I was super excited about it. Well, um, in a situation like that, nobody's excited to come in and find that they have these yeah. challenges ahead of them. And as I'm sure you experience, it's not always pleasant. But as you alluded to, it's a great learning experience mm -hmm. and sometimes you know, those situations are the best learning experience. Yeah. So could you sort of share again with the audience on sort of what you learned from those experiences that you get to carry forward with you? Absolutely. Well, first and foremost, I was extremely lucky to have other great fellow board members. In fact, our chairwoman, Colleen Brown, took me under her wing and has still to this day been a mentor to me. So that was tremendous because I know that many first time directors don't have that opportunity. We also, despite all the different tailwinds that were happening, or rather headwinds that were happening with the retail industry slumping, we had a pretty thoughtful and patient investor in Standard General who had taken a controlling stake in the company. And so they were definitely very helpful there. And then for us, finally, we had to make some changes in the CEO suite. So once we got on some new management, we were working pretty well together. I think taking a step back, the tremendous learnings that I've gleaned from there that I think to this day still help me tremendously are the following. First of all, you have to listen actively, but you have to be able to ingest a ton of information and make educated decisions very quickly. And for me, I think coming from the tech industry, that helped a lot because you're always iterating quickly, often with you know down to the wire 24 hour while deadlines and you really have to be able to make thoughtful educated decisions but at a very rapid pace but now that I've had a little bit more time from it I think about the myriad of issues that we had so once we actually got in the door as the new board members we encountered a lot of things that we didn't realize were as dramatic or drastic as they were so first and foremost you had macroeconomic trends with the retail industry and just getting decimated then we had an expensive debt structure, so we immediately had to block and tackle all hands on deck and restructure that. We also had a really onerous supply management chain, which I ended up digging into because we were trying to move to an omni-channel brand. And we were made in America, which is awesome, but from a cost basis for manufacturing, very expensive. And then finally, probably one of the most difficult things we had to wrangle with was being the precursor to Me Too. There was a lot of different issues that I won't go into too much, but that we had to deal with, with our founder um, that you know was before the Me Too movement happened. And yeah. so to deal with that was a lot. But I think the biggest lesson I took away is that my North Star remained and it still shines bright. 
meaning that you have to have your moral backbone and a strong sense of business judgment and conscientiousness. Because if you don't have that, I think especially in the face of adversity, then things can go horribly wrong. Well, those are some great uh, things that you pointed out there. And yeah. uh, again, it, they're what I would classify as hard lessons. Right. But ones Indeed. that uh, build such a strong foundation that together with your good resume, I think certainly uh, puts you in the position to help companies in the future. Which, by the way, is a great segue into this. And I hope this question doesn't make you feel uncomfortable, but um, there are uh, direct or investors out there that have sort of gone on record to say if a director is involved with a troubled company mm -hmm. or a company that goes bankrupt or whatever, we're going to mm -hmm. put, we're going to give them a scarlet letter. Mm -hmm. We're going to put them over in this pile here that says we don't want to deal with them in the future. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's, that's a broad brush, mm -hmm. okay, of doing that, particularly when there's different timings, like yeah. you said, of when somebody joins and whatever. So I have a two-part question for you that, uh, that is a little bit personal, but I'm going to ask it anyway. Sure. And the first is, do you think it's fair mm -hmm. that everybody's painted with this broad brush mm -hmm. um, that sort of gives you the scarlet letter? And second of all, what would you say to investors who, uh, again, feel that if somebody was in this situation, they're sort of damaged goods mm -hmm. and can't contribute to the success of future companies, mm -hmm. especially with all that you've learned. Right. Well, I think you're bringing up a very, a very timely point, which is I'm sure to some investors I am damaged goods or I'm tainted or branded with the scarlet letter. And I guess what I would say to those folks is the following. I think during my year and a half on the American Apparel Board, I feel like I learned so much and I contributed even multiples above that in a way where I joke around with my friends who have been directors of, on public boards for eight, 10 plus years, that I learned more during that crunch triage time, more than they have in a manner where they just do quarterly meetings. They're more of an arm's length observational perspective in terms of their directorships. And so I think for those directors, or for those investors rather, who say, ooh, you know, that wasn't able to be turned around, I know that we all collectively with Sender General and most importantly with the management team put in a Herculean effort to try to turn it around and unfortunately we weren't able to succeed overall but we were able to succeed where we helped stem the losses, we helped restructure the company far more successfully so that it was able to emerge from bankruptcy and I think most importantly I think it's a badge of honor or a badge of courage if you will, that's how I take it personally in that I think I bring a tremendous amount of insight across so many vectors to the next board that I serve on. And I actually just started serving on another public board that I'm excited about called MediaCo. And I can already tell that my American apparel experience has served me well because you're, you have heightened senses for really wanting to dig in and you also want to be super understanding of what you have and what you need to be able to grow well. And so. I actually view it as a positive, and for those who don't, then I think then we can choose to disagree. <laughs> well, I'm really glad to hear that you've gotten that subsequent opportunity. Um, Thank you. The good news is there's only a, a portion of investors that sort of paint with that broad brush. Yep. Um, so you have a chance to sort of show your skills, and certainly um, I think you've demonstrated today, um, I thought the uh, items that you selected on what you and the lessons you've learned and on those things have were great uh, spot on well, lessons <laughs> and uh, I wish you good fortune on I that going it, forward and I, and I especially thank you for coming on this isn't the easiest discussion to talk about things Happy that don't to. work yeah but it's it's the reality and um, I think you've handled it very well appreciate it yeah thanks TK so that would conclude this edition of Inside America's Boardrooms. We hope you enjoyed the show. We'll be back again next week where we take another look at a critical topic that'll help you be a better board member or committee member. So we'll see you then.